uh, and former governor, a uh, former U.S. senator, uh, that was the, the mastermind uh, behind uh, MF Global. He was running it. He ran it in the bankruptcy. And it's very scary because he is the guy that designed uh, President Obama's economic policy as if it actually needed somebody to design it. I mean, a little kid could have thought it up. Uh, but the fact that it was come up, that it was Corzine, who I guess his plan is going to do for America what it did for MF Global. That's a pretty, uh, pretty scary proposition. But I don't know. I don't know how this is all going to shake out in the short run in Europe. The problem is they got too much debt. They got too much debt because they got too much government. And one of the reasons that governments were able to borrow a lot of money is because interest rates were very low for a while. You know, during uh, the, most of the last decade, the Fed had interest rates very low. As a result of that, all the other countries had low interest rates. And Europe in particular, when you brought a lot of these weaker economies like Italy and Spain and Portugal and Greece into the Eurozone, they got a big drop in interest rates because historically, if the Italians wanted to borrow money or the Greeks wanted to borrow money, it was expensive because people knew they were going to get paid back in drachma or lira, and they knew there was going to be a lot of inflation. But all of a sudden, when they had the euro, bond, the bond market was much more confident. So the Italians and the Greeks and their, you know, were able to borrow a lot more money uh, than they could have in the past, and that's exactly what we did. And now uh, they're paying the price for all that debt. But we've got a similar situation. We've got even more debt. We're going to have to pay the same price. It's just a question of time. Now, Peter, continuing, going back to MF Global, uh, I've seen numbers in the news of he was betting 40 to 1. I've seen numbers in Bloomberg of 100 to 1. Regardless, then I saw the media going back two weeks ago or more spin it that, okay, they took Gerald Salente's six-plus figures and now 50,000 other people's money, and they're going to keep some people's segregated accounts 100 percent and then others they're gonna you know give them 60 percent back but none of that's really started to happen and now people are asking where's the money first they said jp morgan had it uh, and, and and you know as you pointed out we actually have found the video clip of going back three years ago right after obama got elected uh they sent uh the, the vice president biden over to new jersey and he's sitting there at the podium with Corzine saying, thank God when we were talking about having to have bank closures and, and uh, you know, uh, revaluations, you know, uh, uh, thank God that, uh, you know, bank holiday was the word. Thank God you were there advising us on our current plan. So when you say he's the top advisor and then he's a guy at the roulette wheel, not even betting on, you know, a bunch of spots, all the money, but what one number. I mean, it, 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 it's lunacy. It, it, it is scary. Yeah, well, what, what was his plan? How did he? How did Corzine run MF Global? It was lever up, bet big, even with other people's money, and just hope for the best. That's the Obama plan. That describes it right there. Borrow a bunch of money, other people's money, make a big leverage bet on government, on socialism, and hope. But, you know, we already know it doesn't work. You know, I, on my show today, which, you know, we do at, at shiftradio.com is where I do the show, I went over the story of the pilgrims because a lot of people forget that America started as a socialist commune and we became capitalist once uh, the, the, the socialism produced famine and almost destroyed all the Yeah, settlers. more than half of them died in one year. Yeah, they, they died because it was from each according to his ability to each according to his need. It was everybody was in the 1% because there was no 99%. Everybody was equal. And so they were equally starving. And it wasn't until they abandoned socialism and embraced capitalism uh, that they actually started to prosper and they produced enough uh, food to actually have a Thanksgiving. So what Thanksgiving really celebrates is that the our ancestors, the, the first settlers, were smart enough to abandon socialism and embrace capitalism. Them. What's crazy is that here we are hundreds of years later going in the opposite direction, trying to repeat the failed experiment that almost killed uh, the pilgrims. Well said. So, so first it was 600 million, then 700, then a billion, then 1.2, then 3 billion. Now they're saying it could be more than 3 billion of the 6.5 or whatever they went bankrupt with. Uh, I mean, you've got 130 plus employees. You've got a pretty big, you know, firm yourself. You've been successful in investing. Looking at, you know, somebody who's obviously much bigger than you are and much in former head of Goldman Sachs. I mean, it does sound like they're insane to 40 to 1, 100 to 1, whatever it really was. 10 to 1's insane. Oh, yeah. So, well, so, they, so, so, what is the what is the mindset of these people? Or is there a plan to just go ahead? And, and was he making bad bets to somebody else in an inside deal to let them keep the money? Yeah. Well, again, they have a very different business model than me. See, I don't have any debt at all. 
So I don't gamble, you know, even with my own money, let alone somebody else's money or my client's money. So I just make fees. I charge commissions or fees for my services. So there's no there's there's no risk there to my solvency. But what what MF Global was doing was proprietary trading, borrowing up a lot of money that they can get cheap from the Federal Reserve and just gamble with it. You know, and if, if the gambles pay off, I mean, Corzine probably would have made millions, maybe billions. Who knows? Uh, but it did. But you know, it, it, it didn't work. And so, uh, you know, who gets a lot, of, you know, caught holding the bag? If you didn't have this perception of uh, too big to fail, if you didn't have the Fed out there backstopping everybody, keeping interest rates so low, guys like Corzine, they wouldn't be able to make money this way. They would be forced to make money the old-fashioned way. They'd have to earn it. Going back, uh, Reuters even last week said this is sending shockwaves through commodities, corn, pork bellies, beef, that soybeans, farmers don't trust the system now because a lot of them uh, had their money taken. Uh, as it reaches into the billions, uh, from my research, this is one of the first times in modern history since the old you know, bucket shops that they're just saying we're not going to say where the money is. And now it turns out the head of the CFTC had to recuse himself. He reportedly is invested with Corzine in this. The insiders, it turns out, got warnings a month ago, got their money out. Does this herald a really dangerous precedent if Corzine is allowed to take people's private bank accounts, private brokerage accounts? Well, yeah, definitely. And, I, you know, I don't think that this is a bearish uh, development for commodity prices. In the short run, maybe it's added to some of the pressure on commodity prices, which have pulled back quite a bit in recent months, along with stock market and other assets, plus the dollar has gained strength. But ultimately, if farmers really lose confidence in the futures market, that's kind of bullish for commodities because farmers use the futures markets to hedge their risk. And if they if they can't do that, if it's more difficult for farmers to hedge their risk, then that's, that's going to actually put more upward pressure on crop prices because farmers will plant less. If they can't hedge the risk, then they have to take less risk, which reduces the supply of these commodities and therefore increases their price. There you are. That's why in Venezuela or in communist Russia or China, they could never, they had 60 million starved to death under Mao in just a few years because no one could trust anybody. And we get back to this system where, why should I hire people? Why should I plant crops? If, if somebody's just gonna steal it anyways, and then that's how you go from the most prosperous nation to the most degenerate. <laughs> Well, that's what happened with the pilgrims. You know, why should I farm? I'm not going to get to eat any more than the guy that doesn't farm at all. I mean, that was the problem. You've got to have individual incentives. I mean, everybody is out there on this Occupy Wall Street. They want to criticize the big gap, the wealth disparity between the rich and the poor. Well, you want there to be a disparity. You want people to want to be rich. You know, that, that's what drives them and motivates them to create all these products that we all enjoy to, to run these businesses. It's because they want to be rich, right? So there's got to be a benefit to being rich we can't all be the same and the irony of it is some of the people who benefit the most in this system now are not benefiting from capitalism but they're benefiting from what you talked about the crony capitalism the government and the bankers getting together to rob the poor and the middle class that's what they should be protesting not the capitalist the system itself that's the only chance the poor and the middle class have if they want to get rich it's not going to be through government i mean maybe yeah if you get lucky and you're politically connected well, enough, stay there stay there let's talk about that that more and whatever issues you want to raise on the other side with Peter Schiff. But look at history, folks. Communism, collectivism is a nightmare. Free markets, the way to go. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237.
Guys, did you know that starting in your early 30s, your testosterone drops 1 to 3% each year? By 50, you may have already lost half your testosterone. That could explain a lot, like your low energy, muscle turning to fat, and a low drive in your romantic life. Discover Ageless Male, the first and only all-natural supplement that's clinically proven to boost your testosterone levels by 61% and still within healthy, normal ranges. And when your testosterone levels are healthy, Healthy, you can feel more like you did 20 years ago. That energy, that focus and concentration, that passion in your love life. Be the man you used to be. Call now to try Ageless Mail risk-free. Just call 1-800-497-8345. 1-800-497-8345. Don't wait another day. Just call 1-800-497-8345. 1-800-497-8345. Hey everybody, Alex Jones here. If you're looking for the perfect Christmas gift, listen up. This will make your holiday shopping very easy. This year, give a seed bank from one of our oldest sponsors, Solutions from Science, to your friends and family. Here's why. The Survival Seed Bank will give any friend or loved one the ability to grow a full acre crisis garden of nutritionally dense, life-sustaining food. And the Survival Seed Bank is not just a box of open-pollinated seeds. It's an indestructible, waterproof seed bank that can even be buried if we face a real meltdown. And here's the best part. All the seeds in the Survival Seed Bank go through strict germination testing so you can be confident you're not buying old seeds. Give a Survival Seed Bank this Christmas by going to survivalseedbank.com. That's survivalseedbank.com. Or you can call 877-327-0365 to give the gift that produces an ongoing supply of life-sustaining food. Ready for cold and flu season? Now's the time to get ready and save during the pre-winter sale at HerbalHealer.com. Stock up on powerful, natural flu fighters like olive leaf extract, elderberry power, and grapefruit seed liquid. Don't forget your vitamin D3 this winter. Right now, HerbalHealer.com has 120 soft gels, 1,000 IUs on sale for only $9. And remember, HerbalHealer.com offers eFoods Global Products. Delicious, premium, storable foods that contain no MSG, no trans fats, no GMO, and have a 25-year shelf life. Click the eFoods link on HerbalHealer.com and try eFoods storable meals for free. Bookmark HerbalHealer.com, then experience live chat, correspondence courses, and sign up for our free newsletter. As always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Log on and hit the pre-winter specials at HerbalHealer.com. Healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Okay, we're back live, and we're going to be taking your phone calls uh, here in the next segment. Uh, Henry listening on XM 166 and others, and a bunch of news. Stay with us. Gerald Salente coming up in the last 30 minutes to give us an update since last week on the MF Global. Peter, in the five minutes we've got uh, left, looking at Europe, looking at the crises that's happening, looking at uh, the decisions that are being made, where do you see all this going? What... What's most important on your radar screen right now? Well, you know, I think it's coming back here. You know, look at the weak bond auction that we had in the bond market last week, and everybody focused in on how weak that was. Well, you know, I think the reason that people didn't want want to buy 10-year bonds was because the yields were only 2% or just under 2%. People are starting to wake up at how ridiculous these low rates are. It wasn't that people were afraid that Germany or the ECB wasn't going to bail out uh, the rest of Europe. I think it's more likely that they're afraid they will bail them out and print money to do it, and they're recognizing that if they're going to create a lot of inflation, that these 2% 10-year yields are too low. We've got the same situation. Our 10-year bond yields are 2%. We're creating even more inflation. In fact, in America, there isn't even a, a choice here. There isn't even a chance that we do the right thing. They still might do the right thing over there in Europe. I mean, we're, there's no way we're doing the right thing. We've already said we're not cutting anything. We're just printing, 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 because we don't even think there's a problem there. So maybe we're not too far off from a failed bond auction. 